Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Malta offers EU citizenship to anyone with €650,000. BASF sues the European Union Commission for restricting pesticides harmful to bees. Roma migrants could cause riots in cities, warns Blunkett. German parties urge referendum on major EU decisions. Plus, keep free EU movement and end the dodges. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. The Maltese Parliament has approved selling citizenship of the Mediterranean island for €650,000. That's £547,000 for each non-European Union applicant. Joseph Muscat, the Prime Minister, said the programme was meant to bring in revenue to the country while attracting high-value people who could potentially invest in the island. He estimated the scheme would earn the government €30 million Euros in its first year, meaning around 45 people would be sold citizenship, which would also give them the right to work and residency rights in the rest of the 28-member bloc. Well, you've got to hand it to them for using their smarts. What an initiative. However, this highlights clearly the problem that member states face. It is quite possible for an EU member to grant national citizenship to individuals who are transient through the country of issue. On November 6th, BASF, a German agrochemical company, took legal action in the General Court of the European Union to challenge the EU Commission's decision to restrict seed treatment uses of the insecticide Fipronil. BASF joins chemical companies Bayer and Syngenta in challenging the EU's decision to restrict the use of certain pesticides that are harmful to pollinators. The EU Commission decision to restrict the use of Fipronil in July came after the Commission's landmark decision announcing a two-year continent-wide ban on neonicotinoid pesticides. Well, there is big, big money at stake here, and these three companies are not going to give up on trying to promote these key products into the market space. Of course, our team will keep an eye on these cases, and as they progress, we will keep you posted. British cities could face race riots as an influx of Roma migrants creates frictions with local people, David Blunkett, a former Home Secretary, has warned. Antisocial behaviour by Roma people in his Sheffield constituency has resulted in understandable tensions amongst the indigenous community that must be addressed to avert disorder, Mr Blunkett said. Roma migrants from Slovakia must change their culture and send their children to school, stop dumping rubbish and loitering in the streets in order to soothe tensions, Mr Blunkett said. Otherwise, the community could explode in the same way northern towns were rocked by disorder between Asian and white neighbourhoods in the summer of 2001, Mr Blunkett said. Now, as we reported in September, UK infrastructure is already overburdened. School placements oversubscribed, struggling NHS and, of course, social welfare. That's not to mention the problems with housing. And this is before the gates open to Romania and Bulgaria on January the 1st, 2014. German parties negotiating a coalition deal have recommended holding nationwide referendums for major decisions on Europe in what would be a dramatic shift in policy. But Chancellor Angela Merkel looks likely to quash the proposal. The idea was spelled out in a document put together by one of the working groups discussing policy compromises to enable a government between Merkel's Conservatives and the centre-left Social Democrats. Now, if you read between the lines here, you start to see how democracy is being subverted. It seems that Cameron and Merkel are playing the same game of trying to keep the electorate distanced from any input when it comes to the European Union. That should leave folks asking the question, why?
In our letters section, Andrew Stunnell, the MP for Hazel Grove, writes... I signed up to the European project a decade before I joined the Liberals. It was an instinctive reaction to working on refugee resettlement schemes in Germany and Austria. Even in the early 60s, there were still a million displaced persons living in camps in Western Europe in the aftermath of the Second World War. That should remain a stark reminder to complacent Eurosceptics that spending time grizzling about straight bananas risks a lot more than a million or two British jobs and our country's shrinkage to a world micropower. That's what makes being the party of in a patriotic duty. But it would be just as complacent for Liberal Democrats to say either that the EU and its institutions are perfect or that they have always kept up to speed with the changing relationships within it. Now, I have to say that the Lib Dem point of view in these matters always leaves me scratching my head. The default position for Lib Dem is freedom, liberty and democracy, hence the term Lib Dem. But I find it astonishing that the Lib Dem position is in support of the EU. How can that be? The EU is run wholesale by an unelected commission that appoints its members from within. Its parliament has no opposition. It has no manifestos on near and next term policies and once instantiated its legislation is binding and cannot be repealed by subsequent parliaments. Now please, if there are Liberal Democrats amongst our audience, I ask you to please help me understand how in Thor's name you see the European Union as being a good thing. Today in our video library, well, back to banging the drum on our documentary film Betrayed. Views are increasing and we're starting to get some traction, but for this week, I still need as much help as you can give us to promote this video. Now, those of you on Twitter and Facebook can really help out here by posting messages with a link to the video. How about this line? Watch how Heath, Thatcher, Major, Blair, Brown and Cameron have all betrayed the people of Britain. Now, we really need your help on this one. Our research so far has shown that from those people who have seen this video in full, every one of them, without exception, has gone away with a very different opinion of what the European Union is and does. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.